Um, <clears throat> well, um, it, there was no surprise that um, the Fed decided not to make a move this meeting. Um, and the reason for that is they were juggling uh, basically conflicting sets of data. So on the one hand, the employment market has been performing quite well. On the, but on the other hand, inflation remains low and well beyond the 2% target and has remained beyond, below this target for approximately four years now. Uh, and in addition to that, we had uh, some uh, disappointing data over the summer pointing towards sluggishness in the manufacturing and service sectors. So all in all, they, they, they've chose to be a little bit more conservative and hold on for now, um, also in light of the upcoming presidential election, to, to try to avoid creating more um, volatility in the markets. Given that, as you mentioned, there were three dissenting votes and also inflation, they've even downgraded um, their inflation outlook for the year from to 1.3 from 1.4. So how do you see them moving in the latter half of the year? Do you see them actually increasing um, rates given, as you mentioned, the elections? Uh, yes, so despite that the... the point on um, lowering the inflation out outlook, um, because the economy has been behaving well in other areas, the possibility of another uh, Fed rate hike in December has increased. Um, it's uh, not 100%, but a 60% possibility that it will increase rates again in December. Now, talking about inflation as well, the, Japan has also failed to meet their 2% inflation target, but the Bank of Japan came out saying that they actually want to overshoot that target. What are your thoughts on the BOJ's moves? So um, the most important thing that came out of the BOJ meeting yesterday is perhaps the move away from that monetary-based target towards um, targeting the uh, bond um, yield curve. So what that means in practice is that instead of having to um, purchase uh, JJBs at an annual pace of 80 trillion yen, they will do this at whatever pace that uh, new target of around 0% is achieved. Um, so why, why is this uh, good? Um, it's good because um, BOJ can avoid some of the limitations associated with purchasing JGBs in the secondary market. Um, BOJ already holds 40% of all of the JGBs in circulation. Um, but at the same time, it creates uh, this expectation of inflation in the long term. Uh, it creates this expectation that interest rates will remain low in the long term and it avoids a bearish um, uh, increase in the bond yield curve. But the BOJ is also facing some credibility issues. So if this doesn't work, what's left for it to do? Does it have any ammo left? In, the, in a sense, it was a difficult decision for Kuroda because um, doing nothing um, would have accounted to perhaps a political misstep. Um, Kuroda implemented negative rates in January and they were, very, they were not received very positively, so doing nothing would have amounted to admitting his, his failure. At the same time, um, going too far by implementing helicopter money, for example, uh, would have been less palatable for global markets. So this outcome, which is um, tweaking of the pace at which they, they purchase, purchase JJBs and with some other qualitative measures, um, is perhaps uh, the most suitable step at the moment. Now, they do mention in the statement that they will lower interest rates further if they consider it necessary. However, this is most likely in the uh, statement to try to fuel um, the expectation of further monetary easing. Um, it's unlikely that Kuroda has the political capital at this point in time to go ahead and push for uh, lower interest rates. So the question next is what does this all mean for us? Now the BSP is expected to hold steady in its meeting today, but given all those statements, including the, what the BOJ said about negative interest rates, how do you see this changing the central bank's policy setting in the short term? Um, to be honest, I don't see the need to do anything uh, at the moment. Uh, the Philippine economy is set to overshoot growth expectations this year. It's growing comfortably at around 6.4%. Um, and while a lot of that was up, up fronted in investments ahead of the election, 
Um, it's, it will still grow at a significant rate in 2017. We we're expecting around 6%. And inflation has remained, on average, uh, around 1.5% in the whole year. So BSP can afford to um, not hike rates at the moment. Now, we have seen uh, significant capital outflows from the country in the last couple of months. So if the Fed does decide to increase rates in December, that will put pressure on BSP to become uh, more hawkish in 2017. Or, or risk more outflows. Thank you very much, Carlos Casanova. Always appreciate your analysis. Economist at BBVA.